showtime folks hello hackers in today's video we are going to dive into networking protocols before we jump into tools like wireshark it's crucial to understand these protocols because they are the backbone of hacking and network analysis even if you are into devops cyber security or you are configuring a kubernetes cluster or if you are curious behind any network related technology it is necessary to understand the key networking protocol concepts so let's break them down into simple terms so that you can make the most of them if you are interested in curious topics like this make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel as it would really mean a lot it's show time imagine you're sending a letter to a friend your house as a unique address which is the public ip that the post office the internet used to deliver mail however inside your apartment building each unit private ip has a separate number like unit 101 202 etc and the mailman router make sure you, your letter reaches the correct apartment internet protocol ip addresses are like digital street addresses allowing devices to find and communicate with each other across the internet every device whether it's your phone laptop or gaming console has an ip address it's how devices send data like emails videos or tweets there are two type of addresses public versus private public ip addresses are unique used to communicate over the internet while private ips are reused within local networks to conserve the limited number of available ip addresses IPv4 has only 4.3 billion addresses. If your device has a private IP or NAT (Network Address Translation) device, translate it to a public IP where you can access the internet. Consider you're entering a party. You don't know where to sit. The host. DHCP dynamic host configuration protocol server assigns you a table IP address for a few hours when you leave and come back you might get a different table next time DHCP assigns IP addresses to devices when they join a network ensuring that devices get a fresh IP each time they connect this helps manage available IPs effectively and dynamically oh so i guess i'll be on my way Answer you're sending a letter through the postal service you include the sender's address which is the source ip and the receiver's address the destination ip so the post office knows where to deliver the letter ip guides data packets helping them travel across the internet it includes fields like source or destination which shows where the data is coming from and going to total length the size of the data packet fragmentation helps split large packets into smaller ones for easier transfer the internet uh is not is not the nicest of places consider you're ordering pizza you call which means you send a request the pizza shop confirms they received your order which is the ack acknowledgement and then you wait for delivery Once the pizza arrives you confirm that everything is correct before you start eating final acknowledgement TCP ensures reliable communication by establishing connections sequencing packets and verifying delivery It's famous three way handshake sync sync acknowledgement acknowledgement guarantees that both sender and receiver are ready to exchange data Fields like source or destination ports which identify the communication channel and sequence or acknowledgement numbers which helps to keep packets in order and confirm they have been received <laughs> if tcp is like ordering pizza with a delivery confirmation udp is like throwing paper airplanes at a crowd some people will catch them receive packets but you don't know for sure UDP is fast and lightweight but doesn't guarantee packet delivery like TCP. It's used for things like streaming, 
when speed is more important than ensuring every packet arrives. Dad, I can't concentrate on my homework when you're screaming at the TV! This is how I relax! When you want to send a package to someone in a building, you first ask the doorman ARP, Address Resolution Protocol, for the apartment number, MAC address, because you only know the person's name, IP address. ARP links IP addresses to MAC addresses, allowing devices to communicate on a local network. However, it's vulnerable to attacks like man in the middle, where a hacker intercepts or alters communication between devices. Hide the planet! Hide the planet! Instead of remembering your friend's phone number, you just look up their name in your phone's contact. Domain name system DNS does the same thing, translating your website name like www.youtube.com into an IP address. DNS translates human-friendly domain names like google.com into IP addresses. It makes the internet much easier to navigate but can be targeted for attacks like DNS spoofing which redirects users to malicious websites. If we get hot, what do, you, what do you think they'll find? Imagine you're moving boxes, files from one house computer to another using a delivery truck file transfer protocol, FTP. You can both send and receive boxes. File transfer protocol, FTP, allows file transfers over a network. It's often used for downloading or uploading files though its usage has declined in favor of more secure protocols. The clean slate protocol, sir? SMB, Server Message Block, is like a shared bookshelf in a library. Everyone who has access to the library network can borrow or add books, files from the same shelf. SMB enables file and printer sharing across a local network. It's how computers in a network share resources like accessing shared folders or using network printers. If you enjoy watching this video and if you think it would benefit someone, make sure to share this video in your socials as well as it would really mean a lot. I can't, I can't subscribe to that. Understanding these protocols is the first step to mastering network related technologies, network analysis tools like Wireshark and much more. Stay tuned for more interesting curious topics like this. See you in the next video. Bye.